Bentornati, and welcome back to Dwarf Fortress for Beginners, the series in which we explore the in-game tutorials and guides, and try to learn the game in the most basic way possible. So, in the first few episodes we looked at the in-game tutorial, and we looked at the first guide in here, which is about survival, and following that I created a still, I created a few empty barrels, which at the moment have all been used it seems, and I've designated this specific stockpile for barrels. Let me remind you how that is done. It's a furniture stockpile that then we customized and we said no type but barrels, okay? And at the same time I went in my general stores stockpiles and I customized it to say, well, you know, furniture, you should not store barrels, because empty barrels, I want them in here. With that out of the way, let's proceed with the next topic in the information and guides section, which is planting. There's some food on the embark wagon, and you can trade for food, but you can also grow your own. The wagon comes with some seeds, but as you might not expect, these crops must be grown underground. Using mining orders, you'll need to carve out a rectangular area underground for your farm plot. The underground rectangle must be near the surface, where there is soil, loam, clay or sand. One level down should suffice, before you hit rock. The highest mountain elevations do not have soil. Make sure to leave the ceiling above intact, so the underground soil doesn't receive any sunlight. Okay. That this is actually a lot of really condensed information. This is telling us, first of all, that as you begin the, the game, you have some food, and you can notice by looking at the recap in here that we have food, drink, seeds, plant. Now we have a little bit more drinks because we created them in the past episode. You can also trade for food when a caravan shows up, but we can also, of course, grow our own. Also in the wagon we have seeds, Let's take a look at the stocks, and let's look for seeds. So, down here uh, at the S for seeds. Yes, let's minimize this. So, you can see in here we have pigtail seeds. Uh, pigtail is useful for cloth and for brewing. Dimple cup is a type of mushroom that can be used to create blue dye for clothes. Then we have plump helmet spawn. Plump Helmet is a mushroom that can be uh, cooked, can be eaten raw, and can be brewed. Cave wheat cannot be eaten raw, but it can be processed by milling it into flour and then can be cooked. It can also be brewed. Then Sweet Pot Seeds, again they can be processed. And Rock Nuts, which is another type of food uh, that can be processed. All of these plants are dwarven specific plants, so these ones need to grow underground. By underground we mean in the absence of sunlight. All kinds of crops uh, need to grow on soil, be it above ground for, you know, normal world crops or underground for dwarven crops, they cannot grow on a stone layer, you need soil. If you have absolutely no soil for some reason, there is a way to go past that, but it's a little bit more involved, so I'm not gonna cover it in this episode. Just briefly, it involves dumping water on, uh, on stone, so that when the water evaporates, it leaves behind a tiny layer of mud that you can use to grow your crops on. Anyway, on our current map, if we look just one elevation layer below the surface, which is in here, we have both stone and soil, so of course I will be expanding in the soil area. We want to always look out for trees. A problem that we learned is that if you dig under trees and if you remove all the roots, you are left behind with a big gaping hole in your ceiling. So let's dig out a little room for our farms this way. There. This should be more than enough. I'll unpause so that my dwarves can take care of the digging. Now, if you are having trouble finding soil, the reasons might be either maybe you dug too deep. If you take a look downstairs, there's no soil 
down here, uh, it's it's all stone. Now you could dig deep enough that you get to a layer which is a natural cavern layer, and many times natural caverns are covered in mushrooms, and there's a type of soil there, which is actually really good soil. However, those deep caverns come with their own particular share of challenges. Another reason uh, why you are not finding soil could be that, like in this map case, there's multiple different biomes represented on your map. If I zoom out, you will notice that in this area there are no trees. This is a different biome compared to this one that is instead covered in little plants and also abundant trees. So, if I then look downstairs, you will notice that along the seam between the, the two biomes, you can see the difference of soil and stone. Most probably, this is because this biome in here on the right side is a mountain-type biome. Mountainous biomes have little or sometimes no soil at all. Again, a third reason why you might not be finding soil is because maybe you dug under a hill. So, if we were to dug, let's say, this way, under this hill, we might be tempted to consider this still a very shallow area. However, let me look up. This hill is pretty tall, all things considered, so a room that is in here would be actually one, two, three, almost four levels underground. It's very unlikely for you to find soil there. If you want to find soil, and I mean underground soil, easily, stick for now in a flat area, to a flat area, and look just one layer below the surface. A useful trick that will help you find soil should you have difficulties. Look at the map for either rivers or ponds, go one elevation below the surface and look at the stone types or soil types along the banks. So for example in here if I mouse over it says shale or cinnabar, but if I move this way it says sandy loam, that's alright. Again, in here, microcline. Microcline is not soil, that's another kind of stone. Let's look at other places. Again, this is microcline, but in here, sandy loam, so that would again be good. And this is also sandy loam, so by looking at the banks of your river, just below the surface, you can get an idea of where you could find some soil underground or stone. Alright, so now that we have a suitable area, to make a farm plot in, let's proceed by going to Building, Workshops, Farming, Farm Plot. A farm plot is designated like an area, it can be as big or as small as you want. I personally prefer making multiple smaller uh, farm plots rather than a single big one, because that allows for a little bit more flexibility in what you decide to grow in each in each season. So I'm gonna make one workshops, farming, farm plot, two, three, and four. Apparently I skipped ahead too much, <laughs> so let's read in the guide. With the subterranean soil floor exposed, which is our room here, you can place an underground farm plot. This isn't rich soil, but will suffice for now. Dig deeper to find better soil. This is, this is what I was talking about when I mentioned the presence of underground caves. So, shallow underground soil isn't very rich. If you find those cavern layers underground, that is rich soil. And again it says, select farm plot for the, from the build menu. It's in workshops, farming, farm plot. Place the farm plot on the subterranean soil. Let's actually see what happens if we try and make a farm plot where there is no soil. I didn't try that. So farm plot. As you can see, I'm, I'm clicking here, 
but nothing happens, okay? Because this is stone, so it actually doesn't let me uh, click. If you look in the window here, it says need soil or mud at location and then helpfully states no mud or soil for farm at this tile. Mud is left by water, so if we were to let some water flow through this and then we were to remove it somehow, that would, would leave this dusting of mud that can be used for farming. Of course, you could also place a plot upstairs. The upstairs, however, is exposed to the sun, it's lit, so you cannot farm dwarven crops in here, but you can farm using the same seeds that you find in the plants that you might gather around. So, for example, in here we have purple amaranths, onions, which is nice, this bitter veg plant, prickled berries, soybeans, all these things we would be able to gather, uh, maybe first eat raw or process in some way so that we, get, we can get the seeds and we could farm those. However, for now, let's focus on the underground plants. So let's unpause so we can let our dwarves uh, complete the pre preparation of these farm plots. Okay, the four farm plots are ready to be used. Let's expand the guide again. You need to select the crops to be grown each season. Click on the farm plot you placed to pull up the farming menu. Plum helmets are edible and the default wagon comes with plum helmet spawn, which are their seeds. Note that you can obtain all above ground seeds from trade or by eating gathered plants, but above ground farming exposes your planters to dangers and the elements. Now your planters, those that can access both the farm plot and the spawn, will plant the field, and after a period of growth they'll be harvested. Okay, let's now put a few seeds in these farm plots. I select one, and I can see, first of all, there's four tabs relating to the four seasons. It says in here it is now summer, so this one is selected by default. Not all types of crops can be planted in all seasons. So if I look at summer, I can plant cave wheat, dimple cups, pigtails, plump helmets, quarry bushes, and sweet pods. In autumn, sweet pods are not an option anymore, and in winter, only the mushrooms can be planted. In spring, I can have either the mushrooms or quarry bushes and sweet pods. If you, like me, made multiple farm plots, I encourage you to dedicate one to plump helmets as they are one of the absolute staples of dwarven survival. So this farm plots for me will be dedicated to plump helmets all year round. So in the spring, in the summer, in autumn, oh wait, I selected dimple cups, plump helmets. In autumn, dimple cups, and in the winter, did I select dimple cups again? No, plump helmets. Plump helmets, okay. So, plump helmets all, all year round. For now, do not bother with dimple cups, they are only used to dye cloth, okay? They do not contribute to your survival <laughs> in any meaningful way at the beginning. In order of importance, in my opinion, so moving to the next plot, I would say that pigtails are very are a very important crop because out of pigtail you can make a very high quality type of thread and cloth so in all possible seasons in here i would have pigtails planted so both in summer and in autumn and i will go ahead and replicate this also in another farm plot summer and autumn is pigtails on the right side in spring instead, but remember this will be the spring of the next year, because from now it's summer, I will say maybe quarry bushes. And in the winter, again, plump helmets. In the last one, let's say sweet pods, more sweet pods, and then in the autumn maybe cave wheat. And in the winter, plump helmets. Alright. So now I'm gonna have a full selection 
of all the dwarven crops growing throughout the year. The guide says, now your planters, those that can access both the farm plot and the spawn, which means the seed, uh, will plant the field, and after a period of growth, they'll be harvested. If you'd like to focus a few of your citizens on farming, which gives skill benefits, you can assign them to the planter's work detail from the labor menu. We actually already did that uh, in one of the previous episodes, but we can definitely check. So in the labor's menu, we can look at planters. I definitely check this only selected do this, so that basically only Tosit, my bookkeeper, is doing the planting. Also, if you go in standing orders, in the other tab, there is another option that relates to farming, which is this option in here. Right now it says everybody harvests. I personally like to set this to only farmers harvest, and that's because harvesting further uh, trains the farming skill. So my one farmer will be the only one harvesting the crops, which means more opportunities to increase that skill. So I will leave it on only farmers harvest. Okay, I think we can now unpause for a second and see if my planter has access to seed, and I think they do have. Yes, their current occupation is plant seeds. Another way that we can check is by clicking on the farm plot itself, and we will see that now this farm plot contains pigtail seeds. Unfortunately for now, uh, the plants aren't visible at all the stages of growth. However, you can see from here that the seedlings are in there, and you will be able to see when a plant is fully grown. It's gonna be visible on the farm plot, however, a planter will sweep by and collect it so quickly that it's gonna be pretty hard to catch. Let's finish reading the guide. Fertilizer and skilled planters have a direct impact on crop yield. These effects are more pronounced deep underground, where you can locate the cavern bi biome and its rich soil. Potash is the fertilizer of choice, and it can be created in the ashery using ash from wood burned in a wood furnace. A water source zone and a bucket are also required. Fertilizer is not needed to farm. Okay, so it's telling us that we could increase the yield of crops by producing fertilizer, but then again, because this is not rich soil, that would not have that great of an impact in our situation. Now, how would you instruct your dwarves to fertilize? So there are two options in here. You could either say set to fertilize, which means they would make a pass with fertilizer, or you could check fertilize every season. If we wanted to make our own fertilizer, we would have to go, in this case, outside because we need a water source nearby, and we would have to create two separate workshops. The first one is under furnaces, and it's the wood furnace. We could place one close to the wood pile. My only problem though is now is I do not have access to a fire safe building material. <laughs> what does this mean? I cannot make a furnace out of wood because the entire building would, would burn. So I need either stone boulder or something else. Now there's obviously a problem here because I have a lot of shale boulders. However, I just remembered that in the previous episode, being very concerned with security, I left my hatch locked. This is set to forbidden, so nobody would try and open this. Let me unlock this, setting it to passable. So if I try again, workshop, furnaces, wood furnace, now it's alright, I can access my shale boulders. So the wood furnace would be required to make ash, and then I need to make an ashery. So, building, workshops, ashery. Can place it right here. However, it's telling me needs blocks made at a workshop first and needs an empty barrel. Blocks are a more specialized kind of building material. 
I think in this case, I might be able to get by with wooden blocks. So let's try that. I can access the carpenter's workshop, add task. Let's look for blocks, make wooden blocks. And then it says we need an, a barrel. So again in here, wooden barrel, add new wooden barrel. Let's make a few. You always need barrels. Oh, all right. Let's let our dwarves work on this. Somebody is carrying the stone needed for the furnace. Do we have willow blocks? Yes, we do. Let's try now. Workshops, ashery. It's now just requiring an em empty barrel. So, need to wait a few seconds for this guy to make an empty barrel. And as soon as I see a barrel available, I will stop. However, look, this item is tagged by a task and will not be used by other tasks. Probably somebody already reserved it for hauling. However, there is an available barrel in here. So let's pause again, come upstairs and go workshops, ashery, and let's try and build one now. Okay, so I can select willow blocks and then a walnut, bar a walnut barrel. Third item needed, a willow bucket. There you go. Okay, while this happens, I'm gonna select my wood furnace, add a new task, and I'm gonna say make ash. And I can say this one, two, maybe three times. Okay, somebody came by, they picked up some logs, they're not gonna burn those logs to create ash. There you go. Ash comes in bars for some reason. Then I can select the ashery and say add new task and then make potash from ash. Let's try and do this multiple times. Okay, seems somebody is already taken this task. All right, there's now three potash items in the ashery workshop in here. So I can now set one of my farm plots to fertilize. Now this current amount under here, I'm guessing it means how much was this farm plot fertilized. Uh, it can be fertilized with three uh, items of, of potash, but currently is at zero. So now it's just time to wait. Let's follow our planter Tozet for a while. So they are finishing planting seeds. And now they are taking the potash and they are fertilizing this field. Let's look at the field as they do so. There you go, now it says current amount 1 out of 3, and they will continue to fertilize the field. This marks the end of our planting tutorial. The only thing that will happen uh, after this is just waiting for the crops to grow. As they grow, uh, your planters will automatically uh, get in and collect them and store them in a uh, appropriate stockpile. Before the end though, I want to close with a little tip from an experienced player. You might from time to time get into a situation where you get a lot of farming jobs cancelled with some of your dwarves complaining that there are no seeds. Uh, those complaints would be visible in one of the alerts like this one. In this case, uh, my woodworker uh, cancelled the gem cutting job because they found that there were no rough gems to cut. But you could get a complaint like, your farmers cannot plant your crops because they don't have access to seed. And that might happen even though you have seeds, you are pretty sure you have seeds. So what is happening there? The problem relates to how the seeds are normally stored. Let's look for some kind of seed that I'm pretty sure hasn't been planted anywhere. 
So I have purple amaranth seeds, it seems. Now these one are in a purple amaranth seeds bag. So seeds get stored in bags. However, those bags can be stored in barrels. This means that a lot of seeds can end up all stored in a few barrels. Now why, why is this a problem? Because that barrel can be requested by any dwarf that wants to access those seeds. But when the barrel is requested, it's basically locked for everybody else. So how can we make sure that this doesn't happen? Or at least how, how can we minimize this effect? The answer is creating separate specific stockpiles. So if I create a specific stockpile, let's say in here, and I say this is to begin with a food stockpile. And then I go to custom and I say, you know what? Let's actually say none of this, but then let's get back to seeds. And maybe I want to select specific seeds because we are on the ground here. So maybe I want specifically plump helmet spawn, cave wheat seeds, dimple cup, rock nuts, which are the seeds of qu quarry bushes, and sweet pod seeds. Now, this specific stockpile will only accept those kinds of seed, but that's not enough. I gotta get in here and click on this icon, and this will let me set the maximum amount of barrels that can be used to store items in this stockpile. I will set this to zero. Now that I have a specific stockpile that I have also renamed into seed stockpile, the second thing I need to do, or last thing I need to do, is I need to select my general store and say, hey, you know what, under food, I do not want you to store those kinds of seed. For the sake of speed, for now, I'll just disable all kinds of seeds in here. So at this point, my dwarves should notice that there are seeds in here that are not meant to be, and they will instead put them in here. All right, and as you can see, now we have several bags of seeds in here, which are also not in any barrel. All right, so this is it for our episode on farming and planting and fertilizing. For now, though, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next episode. Alla prossima!